this is the source code part of this tutorial and what I did I opened the most recent game engine code developed throughout the series so far we're not actually going to use all of these functions in this tutorial about collision detection but I decided to keep them here so that we don't stray from the original game engine that we have been developing so far if you have no idea what these are I do recommend watching the first 10 tutorials however explanations provided in this tutorial will make sure that you will still learn collision detection from scratch simply ignore all of these files for now well maybe not all of them because the keyboard.js will allow us to move objects around and see whether they actually collide or not but obviously I'm not going to go into keyboard controls in this tutorial and canvas.js will allow us to actually draw different shapes on an initialized canvas other than that this tutorial will focus only on collision detection now because the most recent tutorial ended on RPG style tile map we still see that there is this demo of a dog running around on a brick wall but in this tutorial we're not going to use that at all so what I'm going to do is delete the previous code that we have developed so far so we can start from absolute scratch the only thing that I will leave is the canvas initializing code and animations is something that we don't really need so I'm going to comment this out we also initialize keyboard and the canvas is 640 by 480 window load is still empty and the set interval function which is responsible for drawing one frame within our game is going to be cleaned up a little first we're not going to need anything other than keyboard controls for testing our objects for collision detection because at one point we're going to need to move some of the objects so that they collide with one another just to test our algorithms so I'm going to leave the keyboard controls and remove everything else in the frame and so we have something like this this is our entire JavaScript so far notice that the document ready function initializes the context which is the canvas for JavaScript the size is 460 by 480 and initialize keyboard and disable scroll bars and some animation counter helper function is disabled because that's not what we're going to cover in this tutorial about collision detection the animation counters have to do with animate library component and sprite sheet sprite sheet and sprite but we're not dealing with those components in this tutorial and now as with all of our previous components every time we added new functionality we added a new component to our game engine and so because this is a collision detection tutorial we're going to add a couple more components and the first component is going to be the point JavaScript file in this file we will have a library for dealing with points because obviously in collision detection you will need to have a way for specifying x and y position for each point the second library we're going to write is segment and segment is really just a line defined by two end points and finally we're going to need some utility functions because these are just libraries covering point and line but we need to have some helper functions for our collision detection algorithms that will be based on some of the examples that I explained in the first part of this tutorial and so I'm going to name this library collision and 
It will include utility functions for all kinds of different collision tests. And before going to the next step, first of all, I'm going to refresh the browser so it cleans all of that code that we have just erased. And before I start writing the point.js library, first I want to show you something. Remember how we created Canvas to initialize Canvas in JavaScript. And so I'm going to drag this file in here, and that's the definition of canvas.js. Notice that by the end of this function, the actual context, which is the graphics interface for canvas, is stored in this dot context variable. And so that means that when we initialize canvas with this function here, and assign the result of this HTML object from canvas.js to the canvas object. That means that the handle to our canvas will be stored in context context. And so so that it's easier for us to access this in the future, I'll create window GFX and assign this to context context variable. This will allow us to use window GFX or actually even just GFX because in JavaScript everything that is attached to the window object will be also available in its normal form. For example, once you assign window.jfx to context context, then throughout our entire application, we can refer to this context by simply using variable jfx, because it's already attached to the main window object. And so this allows us easy access to the context graphics. And so instead of using context context all the time, we're simply going to use JFX. This will also allow us to quickly draw points and lines for our libraries that we're going to write next.